Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. I just picked this up uh, on the way to work for a reasonable price. It's a looks like a mid '60s General Electric AM FM clock radio. And if we want to take a look here, the uh, Model C510A. So it's in nice looking shape. I have no idea if it works. They said they couldn't get it to work. But maybe they just didn't wait for the tubes to warm up. So let's take a look inside and see if there's anything obvious. Looks like it's pretty easy to get inside. We've got uh, the induction antenna here. And mostly quarter inch that's here this was another one of those why do I need another headache project but the case wasn't trash and it looked nice so I figured eh, it's a little series string tube radio what could go wrong with it famous last words okay I always like to get a look inside and make sure there isn't obviously any blown up capacitor or critters living inside, dead or alive. All right. So there she is. It looks like somebody did a... Uh... <laughs> Somebody did an awesome repair job there. Look at that. Those capacitors there in the corner. Yeah. I like that electrical tape just holding them there. Oh, that one shorted against the transformer there. That's just... Yeah. That's pretty awesome. I like their interesting... Uh, mechanical band switch here is that uh wow complex huh these are the cans that love to get silver mica disease and that's a ge so that's pretty much a given 35 gl6 output that's a that's an odd one. I don't have that. And then we've got the uh, Telecron clock motor. Our spiffy selenium rectifier. I bet you this board needs to be resoldered. But we, we definitely have to take care of this mess. If Even at the very minimum, just heat shrinking those leads. I mean, come on. Come on. Just hang in there? Really? Oh, yeah. And look at the... Let me see if I can get it to zoom here. Look at the solder job on that one. Look at that bit of crust. That's just great. This capacitor's bulging anyway. You can see the top there. It's like used parts. So this is a 220 microfarad at 200 volt a little overkill for this radio but whatever let's undo the electrician's tape the adhesive of which is failing so this wouldn't have lasted very long another great tack solder job in there this one's bulging too 47 at uh, 160 sanyo Wow, man. Just real efforts there. Well, probably knowing General Electric had had one of those cardboard cardboard things in it. And uh, they reused uh, these individuals to replace it. The cardboard thing would have stood up here. So, yeah. That's quality workmanship. I'm glad I looked at that. That one capacitor was shorting out against the transformer here. That would have made for a nice light show. Always check them. So let's see here. 
I think what I'll do, I don't have high hopes for this radio given what I just have seen here. See, now why couldn't they have like strapped it to the edge here standing up? There would have been enough room. Or even better, just soldered it to the board. Of course, then that would have required that they take the linkage and stuff loose here. And look at these plastic things. Let me get the camera up here so you can see it. Look at those little plastic things there. That's going to die. Use that enough. There's another one there. But just... Oh, yeah. That's going to die. General Electric Engineering, man. Let's use the worst parts possible for the highest duty of uh, work needed. That tuning shaft there is almost frozen. Kind of work that loose a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's just fantastic. All right. Well, now that we've got this out of the way here, let's uh, apply some power to it and see what it does, if anything. People I bought it from said it didn't work, but that could mean a whole variety of things. Let's find out. All right, so I'm going to flip the switch here and we're going to see what happens. Huh, clock's working. Why are the tubes lighting, though? This shouldn't be on. Unless the switch is bad. Or it's stuck. Let's see here. Oh, got something. This fog, it is lifting, but we still have an advisory. Till I guess they just didn't wait for it to warm up. Vandalism at your commercial property. That's Kogo. Protect your business with advanced video security. There's KFI. We're in a cinder block building, so that's pretty good. Upper band performance kind of sucks. Week 12 of the NFL. In, uh, in, uh, South. Let's see if the FM works. Let's hook up an antenna. Mm, something getting hot. So that's my signal generator right there. But you hear that all over the band. Look at that. Awesome selectivity there. Still hear it in places. So that's supposed to be channel 6, and it's coming in at 91.7 or something. So the oscillator is like way off, because that's supposed to be 98.5, and that's coming in at 101. And I still haven't figured out why the... Uh, Machine won't shut off. It's on all the time. But yeah, that's like that's way off. I wonder if it warms up, we'll get silver mica disease. Sometimes you can reveal it by tapping on them. You 
No. Yikes. Definitely got some crusty tube sockets. Okay. See, that one was sensitive. That one's really sensitive. Wow, that just like really destroys the oscillator, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, yeah. Alright, so this thing up here, I believe, this black thing here, is the uh, switch, the power switch. Yes, no, maybe. Of course. Let's turn it to off first. And then let's look at it between off and on. See, I would think that this would pull back. Or maybe this is in the wrong spot. Maybe there's something going on with the clock or maybe somebody jammed it in there. Uh, see, I would think... Let's see, or maybe there's... There we go. Alarm was stuck. Okay, you see how that snapped off then? Well, that still doesn't disengage the switch. Just changes its positioning, I guess. We're in the off position here. Yeah, I don't have the, the greatest experience with Telecron, so I'm not sure really what I'm doing here. That's to set the time, that's to set the alarm, which we just disengaged. Maybe it was just stuck. And then it's like something else down here. Yeah, feel free to fast forward through this crap. I'm just looking at stuff. I really have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, so even after futzing with that, the switch is still locked into the on position. So it's, uh, the clock really needs to be pulled out. And we need to figure out what's going on with that. Problem is, if I pull the clock out, then the dial face and everything, this has to come off. So that I can, is that even possible? Is this just like in here? Glued in here like so many of these are? But okay, well, let's worry about the clock thing. I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, let's clean some of these sockets and see if I can get that a little bit happier. So really there was like three, three sockets that were dirty. There was the uh, mixer oscillator. This one was the worst. And you can see that, well, maybe you can't see. There's some green fuzzies there on that. So I'm going to get some CRC and spray the socket because it evaporates. It's non-conductive and it doesn't leave a residue, which I like. You can use D5 too if you let it dry out. So I'm just working this in a circular motion as I go out and in. In theory, that should clean it up a little bit. And we'll do the other one here, too. This one, this first IF, was really sensitive. Looks to be mostly all original tubes. Some uh, hack guy threw the capacitors in there when it got the hum, and that was pretty much it. Alright, and then... The third one was the detector tube, this guy here. He was really sensitive too. 
So I'm just going to hose that. Clean it up. I know all the OCD people are going nuts right now because of all the fuzz and dust and everything else I've left in this thing. So let's see if that made an improvement on performance at all. All right, it's warming up. Let's see what's going to happen. Tin up. Oscillator's still way off. But you know that uh, bleed through is gone. Yeah, so this needs to come in about here. So let's see where the uh, adjustments are. Sometimes you got to bend a coil or a core, sometimes you got an adjustment. Let's see. All right, so it looks like on this one down there with the little white stuff on it that's your uh, your oscillator coil and you'll see that as I compress and move this that the uh, frequency is going to change and I'm going to use a non-metallic object in this case a fiberglass rod and if I squeeze this a little you can see it changes the radio frequency And so what I need to do uh, to decrease the frequency, I believe that you spread them apart. So, yeah, let me see if I can get a, a more wedgy type tool in there because there's very limited room for movement. I have this green thing, which is a non-metallic. I should be able to spread this. If I spread it apart, yeah, that decreases the frequency. So now instead of tuning at 101, it's tuning at about 100. So let's widen the core a little bit more. May have to get this from another angle because I can't really... With the cabinet in the way, you can't really do a whole lot. Got to scrape this off too, if that's possible. Nope, I'm thinking not. All right, so let's see if that. There we go. That's tuning at 99. Let's see how true that is up the band, and not just in my test spot. Because I know these dials aren't terribly accurate. Let's see what it's like everywhere. Yeah, so it's not accurate all over. Upper band's pretty close, though. I think what I may need to do is spread all the fins apart equally. So that's going to take two hands. Alright, so I spread them all apart equally. We're going to see how badly that throws things off. That's closer on the bottom end. So that's 89.5, just a hair below 90, so that's... Oh, he 
92.5, that's pretty close. But then you start to get yucky here. Because now we're at 97 and it's coming in at uh, 98.5 is coming in at 97. So we're going to have to play with this some more. We got no upper band either. All right. So I'm going to toy with this a little bit more. Everyone's going to get to listen to fun. Okay, let's squeeze these a little bit. Ah, uh, come on. We get a more rigid piece here. I got a piece of wood stick. All right, let's try that. Yeah, the bottom end compression kind of sucks. So let's uh, let's compress the bottom and spread the top. Assuming I can get this little chunk of glue off here. Yeah, it doesn't want to move. All right. So that's a little low there. See, before you had trimmer capacitors and better designs, you had this outfit, which basically made you tweak this so that it worked. And it's true, how you tweak this core, that's actually going down now. All right, so we need to compress them a little bit more. All right, let me play with this some more. All right, so with the oscillator, I've just had to deal with the happy medium. Setting the core in the right place, you get all the band, top to bottom. The bottom's a little more condensed than I'd like, but but it works. So I think what I'll do now is just a little RF touch up here. Let's turn down the sensitivity a bit and see if we can adjust our trimmers to make that a little bit happier. Of course, they're hidden underneath here, which is just a fantastic place to put them. That one's pretty well peaked already. And you got another antenna core there, but I'm not going to mess with that. So let's get some tools and see if we can't dial in the IF a little bit better. That's pretty well peaked already. I'm thinking somebody went through this one when they did the caps. That's for AM. Detector's pretty well centered. Alright. Well, I'm just going to leave that one be. 
it's working pretty well as is. We could do a touch up of the AM maybe. It's a pretty good performer out the box, that's for sure. Yeah, given the fact that the primaries are in such good shape, I don't need to I don't think I need to tweak the secondaries. That's pretty good performance for being inside of this building, so we'll just leave that one. Okay. So it runs. Clock works. I need to figure out that switch thing. Okay, so the sad news is, from what I'm reading on uh, various forms that deal in Telecron clocks, is that uh, there's a little bake light plunger inside of the switch. Uh, people work the switch too much, the bake light gets old, it cracks, and then the switch uh, no longer disengages because there's nothing to touch the cam that's supposed to come around and uh, press the two contacts away from each other. So the switch just kind of is what it is. And I think what I'll do is end up installing a little toggle or something on the back side so that you can at least turn the radio on and off, even if the clock's to be running all the time. Uh, that doesn't really concern me as much. So I'll just drill a tiny little hole, put a switch in, and run some wires. And as far as this mess, uh, I think what I'm going to do, I see a spot back there, that little hole. I might mount a little terminal strip and attach stuff to that. Well, that's interesting. What's that back there? Huh. So I'm wondering if that's the little Bakelite piece they're talking about because it looks like a chunk of something broke off in there. Well, that could be the, the switch death. Also, um... Uh, yeah, the selenium rectifier still works. It's not getting ungodly hot, so I'll probably just leave it in there until it fails and stinks up the place. Like I said, I didn't have a lot of high hopes for this radio. It was just kind of a cool, cheap thing. But let's see what I can do about getting a switch in here and then uh, remounting these capacitors in a better place. Okay, so... Done a little bit of cleanup on the chassis here. I just got rid of the old caps. I put a terminal strip back here and mounted a 100 and a 47, which is usually what the typical things would be. It's actually an 80 or a 50, but 100 and a 47 work. Uh, so yeah, and then I installed, drilled out and installed a little toggle switch back here, which takes the power from the input to the clock switch and then the output to the radio. And that's just going to kind of live back here. And I really don't care. It's just, you know, the clock will run. Uh, if it has a little alarm buzzer, that'll work. But it won't turn the radio on anymore. Which sucks, but I'm not going to try messing with that clock. It's not worth my effort to me. This is just a cool little shop radio. So uh, let's get it back together, power it up, and see how it works now. Okay, well, back together it is. I cleaned it up a little bit. It really does have a nice cabinet for one of these. So let's flick the switch back here. Let's see if we get life. It's always that uh, moment when you're waiting for the tubes to warm up. But it just accelerated. 
What would you do if your partner wanted to really start exploring things in the bedroom? Working pretty good. Now I got the sensitivity on this turned way down. So, it's got a pretty good radio. I'm surprised it uh, doesn't have the silver mica disease, but that's a good thing. So, I'll probably just hang it around here in the shop and play around with it. Cool little thing. And then when I want to, I can just flick back here and turn the radio off. Otherwise, look stock from the front. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the little video and uh, more stuff to come.